Recently, I saw this really interesting effect done in Cinema 4D, which I'll leave a link to in the description. But basically, it was a mesh that was being kind of deformed, almost like it was a gelatinous type substance where the objects were pushing in and the geometry around it was kind of deforming around the objects. So I wanted to cover how we can do this inside Houdini. Let's go ahead and drop down a geometry node and this project file will be available on Patreon if you want to grab it on there and take a look at how I did everything. You can grab it through there. Let's go ahead and create a sphere and then we'll make this a polygon. Let's dive in there and take a look at the frequency. Let's up that to 10 just to give us a little bit of a smoother mesh. I'm also going to crank this up maybe to just a value of 10 here. And what I'm gonna do is create some points onto this sphere that we're gonna use a pop net to then create an animation of some points going into this mesh being popped back out. So let's create a scatter. We don't want too many points, so let's drop down to like 30 for the total points there. And then let's drop down a pop net and dive on in. So in here, let's go ahead and just Take a look at our input here. So I want to only scatter points onto our points that we have here. You can see we kind of have some points here. And the way that we do that is Tim to this emission type and set that to points. And then we're gonna use the first context geometry, which was what we piped in. And we only want to emit on the first frame. So I'm going to disable this constant activation. I'm gonna to come to the impulse activation and set this equal to $FF equals equals one. And that will make sure that points are only emitted on the first frame. And I also want to set the impulse number. So this impulse counts how many points are gonna be spawned. I want one point per point of the scatter. So I'm gonna come into our scatter, copy that parameter, and let's paste relative references into that impulse count. Now, if I drop down a pop uh, tract, you can see that press play, our points are spawned and they're moving towards the center and then they're being shot back out and they're overshooting there. So let's go ahead and disable the guides here. But we wanna take this, this attraction and we want to, once it reaches a certain point, we want it to pop the points back out. So we'll need to create a group in order to do this. So we'll do a pop group and let's call it, you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it repulse. And we want to come into this bounding and enable the bounding box, but we want to set it to a bounding sphere. And we're going to crank up the size here, maybe to something like that. And then we want to just take another pop attract. Let's wire this in here. And we only want to affect the points in this group. So we'll take the repulse group, and then we're going to take the force. We're going to set this equal to like 600 and the reversal distance will set this to like six. This will allow us to have these points being pushed back out. Now I also only want to be attracting the points that are not in that group. So we wanna take this repulse group and we're gonna do exclamation point repulse. That will ensure that the points outside of this group are being pulled inwards, but once they go inside that group, they're being shot back out. So if I press play now, you can see that they're going to be brought in and then they're gonna be shot back out. Now they go a little haywire because we don't have any other forces acting upon them. I also want them to move a little quicker towards the center. So let's change that force scale to like four. And then let's drop down a pop wind before the attract. And let's crank up the altitude or the amplitude a little bit and the swirl size will drop that just a little bit. And this will just give us some breakup to our points. You see they're no longer moving at the exact same right and they're not being pulled in at the same time and pushed out at the same time. Just breaks it up and makes it look a little bit nicer. So that's all for the pop simulation here, but let's go ahead and drop down an attribute randomize to give us some random p-scale. So we'll set this equal to p-scale, make it one dimensional and we'll set this equal to like, I don't know, 0.5 and one maybe. For now, let's drop down a sphere We'll make it a polygon and crank up the frequency and then let's copy two points. Copy those spheres onto the points that we just created. 
and that gives us this type of an animation here. And maybe those points are just a little bit too big on the high end here. So let's drop that to like 0.7 and 0.3 maybe. So once we have that set up, we need to actually create the denting effect or like the deforming effect. So we're going to actually take this sphere. Let's make a copy of that. We're going to take a VDB from polygons. And we're going to turn these all into VDBs. And we're going to use VDBs to create this. You can probably do this with Booleans as well. I didn't try it. This just kind of made the most sense to me. So let's drop this voxel size down to point. O2, and we'll make another one of those. Let's take this sphere here though, and we wanna template our points. And we wanna crank up the size here to start engulfing these points as they're kind of popping out of the geometry or being in, enveloped into this geometry. So that should be good there. And let's take this sphere, drop that to 0 0.02. Let's Crank up the frequency for this and just make sure it's nice and smooth. They get a frequency of something like 50. So now we need to take these, these spheres that we are going to be denting this object with, and we want to make them a little bit like, a little bit bigger to create sort of like a lip around them. And then we're gonna smooth that out. And we also are going to need to uh, make this sphere a little bit bigger to, in order to create that lip. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It should make a little bit more sense here as we start going. So we'll do VDB reshape SDF. And we're going to need two of these, one for each. So this one is going to create kind of, or the combination of these two is going to create how much of a, of a lip there is, if you will. So let's dilate this by like three maybe, probably three for each of these to start off with and we'll see what that gives us. Now we need to combine these. So we'll do VDB combine. And we wanna take both of these and combine them together with an SDF intersection. So if I do FDS intersection, that's going to give us this type of a look. And then we need to take these little pieces that we've created and we need to subtract out our spheres from them so that we can get a hollowed out center so it's like the object is actually pushing into the object so we'll do b2b reshape again let's take our input that we just created and we want to take our original our original spheres and we want to or sorry not a vdb reshape what am i doing b2b combine and we'll take our original spheres and the ones we just created and we want to do a subtraction here and that's going to cut out the geometry of our spheres as it's pushing in kind of give us that denting or this deforming type effect we also are going to need to do that for the this piece right here onto our sphere our original sphere right here so let's wire in our first input as the original sphere and we want to subtract the shapes that we created that will give us something like this it's sort of like craters on this now we need to combine them back together so we'll do another vdb combine and we'll wire in both of these and we want to not do a copy, but let's do a minimum. And that will give us this type of a look. Now we can then smooth this out. So with the VDB smooth SDF, but this gives us an error, which you may get sometime. The easiest way that I've seen to get rid of this is just to convert this to polygons. So to polygons and then we're going to do another VDB from polygons and we're gonna convert it back to a VDB. And then we can take this VDB smooth SDF and that will give us something like this, which is more in line with what we're looking for. Now, let's take a look back up here to kind of explain this a little bit better. So with these 
two nodes right here. This is kind of controlling the overall shape. So if I were to drop this offset, this dilate down, you're gonna see that we get a much less defined lip there. So if I crank that back up, or if I really over crank this, you can see that we get these kind of bulges coming out. So we don't want that. We wanna just keep it nice and nice and smoothish. But if we take a look at this other one for our spheres, if I drop this down, you can see what that does as well. If I over crank this, you can see that's gonna give us a much fatter of a lip here, which we don't necessarily want. So we just find something that's a nice middle ground in between the two and you can get a nice little effect. And you can always come into this smooth SDF and you can crank up the filter voxel radius or smooth it more if you want or do whatever you want. But I would cache it out at this point so you can just drop down a file cache. The reason I say to do it at this point and not to convert it back to a polygon mesh is because once you've done this and you've cached this out, it's going to kind of lock you into the look that you have. So you don't necessarily want that. You want to keep as much control as you can. So like I said, I would cache it before you convert it back to a VDB. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So on the original simulation here, you can see that I did just that. I got this cache and we've got this effect going on. Now, this was a little bit quick in post, which I realized. So I slowed it down a little bit later on, but this is kind of the type of effect that we got. These points moving along, they're gonna be sucked into this object. Once they get sucked in, they're kind of shot back out rather quickly. And you can come into the pop net and you could slow that down in there. And that's actually what I would recommend doing. It, I was able to make it work in post, but it was not the best solution. I would definitely do it. If I did it, had to do it all over again, I would definitely do it actually in the simulation. But overall, it turned out pretty well. So this is a pretty cool effect that I wanted to try to recreate. And like I said, you can probably do this with Booleans as well, but it kind of made the most sense to me to just do it inside of VDBs. Not necessarily the quickest thing, but Booleans can create some artifacts that are hard to get around. So this works just a little bit better, so, or at least it, it seemed like it would in my, in my mind. So anyways, hopefully this helps you out. I do have a bunch of other videos on Houdini on my channel. So if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check out those videos. I also cover some things on render engines. So Redshift is primarily what I've covered. I've also done some stuff on Karma as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure to check out those videos as well. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Check out the other videos if you're interested in them, and have a good day.